the, the next speaker is my friend from the University of Seged, uh, Berlinoid, uh, with a talk, uh, Bernstein Type Inequalities and Potential Theory. So please. Uh, thank you for a very kind introduction. And I also would like to thank the organizers for uh, this opportunity to give this talk here. Okay, and uh, so I, I make it full screen. And yes, it's okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. So first, uh, so these these results are. I mean, the recent results are are joint uh, parts of the joint work, uh, joint with Sergei, and this is a necessary support text. So first, I start with the background. Um, on Bernstein inequality. So Bernstein uh, proved his inequality for algebraic polynomials. And he estimated the derivative of the subnorm at a given point uh, using uh, the subnorm of the polynomial, the degree, and, and the geometric factor. So and uh, this this factor is independent of the polynomial it depends only on the point itself so it 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 is, it is well known and it has um, several applications and um, this factor uh look odd at first but the point is that it is the sharp quantity here so it's interesting that for more general sets, it was uh, proved only much later uh, by Baran and by Wilmer Stotik independently. And th these extensions are sharp. So, and, and uh, um, another result for, for motivation. So this is uh, on, on the, this is, this is uh, asymptotically sharp Bernstein type inequality for special compact sets on the complex plane. So uh, in this theorem, we identified uh, the sharp geometric factor here. So the assumption on the class of sets is the following. So of course, the complement must be connected because we use uh, supremum norms of polynomials. So this is not a restriction. And uh, this set, I mean, the boundary should be nice. Um, it, it could be, uh, I mean, the set could be disconnected as well. And uh, here, uh, we, the, we estimate the derivative of the polynomial at a given point using the subnorm of the polynomial, the degree of the polynomial, and a factor, a geometric factor, which is independent of the set. And it is um, actually the normal derivative of the Green's function of the complement. Okay, admit. Uh, of the complement of K. And then the new feature is that, that there is this error term. So it, it, it's new. And the point is that this, is, this tends to zero as, as n tends to infinity, and it is uniform in Pn. So actually, it depends only on the degree, not on, on Pn. And this result is sharp in the following two meanings. First, this is a, is a particular number, so one can compute it, but you cannot replace it with a, a smaller uh, positive number. And uh, for example, and the second um, thing I would like to mention is that this error term cannot be dropped, so it must be present. And uh, the proof uh, used Lemniscates skates and, and potential theory. So therefore, let me recall some, okay, some facts about Lemniscates. skates. Uh, so uh, let, let's take a complex polynomial and, and we suppose that the leading term is this eight times z to the power m. In other words, um, 
A is a non-zero complex number and M is the degree. And this set, I mean, the level lines at modulus one is called the lemnis gate of T. So this is, uh, uh, it is known that it, it, has, it has a nice structure, consists of finitely many uh, Jordan curves or curves maybe intersecting itself and uh, it's, it's analytic. And uh, we will use this omega of H for the unbounded complement of the complement of, of a compact set. So for, for the, for the lemnis gate, it, it contains the exterior of the lemnis gate and the point infinity. And the point is that for lemnis gates, it is easy to compute some potential, some quantities frequently appearing in, in potential theory, in particular, the, the capacity of the lemnis gate or uh, the green function of the complement of the lemnis gate, which can be written in this way. These are known. And actually this relation can be differentiated so we can obtain the normal derivative of the Green's function, which can be expressed in, a, in this very simple form. So this is an advantage of, of using lemnis case, but of course uh, not everything uh, is a lemnis case. So it's natural to investigate the density of density results. And, and uh, uh, this is the Hilbert's lemnis case theorem. So this slide is devoted to this one. Actually, uh, Hilbert proved it for the simply connected case and, and then later Poya and, and finally Walsh proved it in this generality. So if we have a, a compact set, for which the complement is connected and we take a neighborhood of, of K. And uh, do you see the picture? I mean, is this red curve visible? I'm closing this dark blue. Some curve is visible, but uh, it's not re red. red. Uh, ah, oh, okay, okay. So okay, the point is, so, so this dark blue, I mean, it's it's not a connected set. It could be uh, very ugly or or very comp nice if, as as you prefer. Uh, so this would be the set K here, and this light blue would be the neighborhood, this calligraphic U. And the point is that no matter how you how the how close the light blue neighborhood is to the original dark blue set K, then you can, one can always insert a lemnis gate in between them. So this um, curve is, is in the light blue region and, and encloses the dark blue set. Okay. And we, we had to sharpen it uh, with William Stotik. And uh, this is the following. Actually, it's uh, it's, uh, it's it's the following. So instead of of taking arbitrary compact sets, um, we take just uh, Jordan curves, which are smooth, uh, finitely many. So. Um, and again, we take another set of, of finitely many digital smooth Jordan curves such that they are contained in each other as, 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 an, as you can see on this, this figure. So this bl blue inner curve would be the bound, uh, would be the set of this. Oh, sorry. So the, uh, Yes, so the, as you can see, the green would be the outer set of curves and the blue would be the inner set of curves. And we allow them to touch uh, each other at finitely many points. And at, at these points, we require that the, the, their curvatures are, are, are different. And the point is that uh, there exists a lemnis gate. Uh, this would be the this in-between curve, which would be red. Um, 
between this uh, outer green and inner blue curves. And the proof, uh, so this construction uses faculty points and faculty polynomials. Uh, and uh, this, this requires, uh, leads us to um, small, small asymptotically minimal polynomials and, and, and uh, constructions like that. So this is a, a the, the, this faculty polynomials played a, a crucial role, a, a key role in, in, in the proof. And uh, actually, the proof is, is not so short. Okay. And the next, I mean, this explains, this slide explains why we needed this curvature condition and, and this closeness condition, uh, because we wanted to estimate the normal derivative of Green's function. And here, uh, I, I hope it's visible. So there is this uh, red arc uh, and this uh, black curve and th th there are some gray arrows here showing that actually the proof is 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 done with with balayage so sweeping out of measures and and the this local property and this global property ensures that most of the balayage are are, are participated or swept on, on to close to this so not only the measures are closed but the densities of the equilibrium measures are, are, are closed okay so and uh, and the question is of course is there a simpler proof for for the asymptotic Bernstein type inequality or, or or more precisely do we need faculty or, or minimal polynomials or actually which is is, is, a, is a definite question uh, uh, let's describe the external sequences. So actually we, we uh, worked on, on this uh, with Sergei. And uh, first, uh, an example showing that uh, the error term could be very, very large. So uh, for example, if you have a very simple polynomial Z, and or, or set is, is a bit complicated. It, it looks like a, a flower with uh, 100 uh, petals and uh, around the origin, but uh, it's actually, since it's a bit larger than one, so it's actually a, a analytic Jordan curve. Okay, and if we choose a, a test point close to the origin, then we can check that, um, okay, the supreme norm is, is a fixed number, in particular this one, the degree is one, and the derivative is always one. So, so and uh, while the geometric factor would be very small, provided uh, this is, 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 is close to the origin. And the, the, uh, to, to compensate, this very small factor, the error term must be very, very large. And in, in this example, uh, so somehow the polynomial behaved quite independently and, uh, and uh, sort of neglected the structure of, of the set. So if you draw the landscape of this polynomial, this is just the unit circle, while this is a rather complicated uh, set. And uh, uh, the, the restriction was the degree is very small, so we cannot really rearrange this, this polynomial. Or, or, and uh, one more thing that this ratio, so, so it's, it's very small at the origin. I mean, at Z naught. Okay. Okay, so what happens then if we have a, a very particular case. So I assume that uh, we have a compact set, we take a boundary point and, and uh, we assume that the boundary is, is a C2 smooth Jordan arc near this point. And uh, 
if we, if we take a polynomial which is extremal, so not asymptotically extremal, but extremal at this fixed point, and, and then it, it could that um, this condition is not satisfied. So so if p n is, is uh, the value is far away from the subnorm, then anything can happen. So we assume we, it's not it's natural to assume this condition as well. So but as soon as we assume these two conditions, then we get a, a very special setting because then the set must be the lemniscate of the polynomial. So this is actually quite rare. So, and this proof is based on, on, on Hopf's lemma actually. We, we need this condition to uh, put a small disk touching the set K from outside at, at Zenat. And this is, and we, we compare uh, the Green's function and then uh, um, natural function coming from the, the polynomial, which is, is harmonic because of this condition of oh, this disk. Okay, um, so it means that uh, considering it for for one polynomial is 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 something very rare. So therefore, we uh, consider it along sequences. So again, we have a nice set uh, with with smooth boundary, and uh, we have a sequence of polynomials. And uh, because or the the asymptotically sharp Bernstein type inequality is an asymptotic result. So we investigated such sequences of polynomials which realize this extra bar case. Um, so in other words, this relation holds. And um, just, uh, uh, yes, two, two comments here. So it's important that uh, the, the set or, or the complement of the set, uh, the unbounded complement of the is, is regular because uh, if we just add one point to, to k far away, so then the Green's function will be the same. I mean, it, it, it does not notice that we had the a set. Uh, the derivative, of course, doesn't change, but the supremum norm will change. So it's, it's important that it, this set is regular. And uh, actually the leading coefficient is, is not important because we can just uh, simplify uh, the polynomial uh, with it. So we can assume without loss of generality that this sequence is, is a monic polynomial. And then another uh, asymptotic uh, sequence is, is the, it is known actually. So the asymptotic, uh, we call it asymptotic extremal for the Chebyshev problem or, or abbreviated this way, if this condition holds. So it's, it's a sequence of monic polynomials. So it's, it's a rather large class of, of sets. And uh, actually it was mentioned in, in uh, several uh, earlier talks that uh, we have this inequality here and also there is such a sequence, for example, in particular, if we take the Chebyshev polynomials, uh, then this will satisfy um, this uh, limit relation. Uh, or, of course, we always assume that our set K is infinite, uh, even if we don't assume such nice uh, conditions. Mm. Okay, so, and we will see later that this nth root um, contraction. So, so this is, is very strong and it brings together uh, several extremal problems, if I may say that. Okay, and um, yes, next slide. Okay, so this is our, our main result. Um, uh, joined with Sergey. So we have a, a compact set 
uh, we take a, a boundary point. So it's, it's nice. It means that the boundary consists of finitely many uh, smooth uh, Jordan curves. And uh, it, it is polynomially convex. That is the complement is, is connected. And um, uh, we take a, a sequence of monic polynomials and uh, we have this technical assumption. Uh, it means that the zeros are in a, in a big fixed compact set uh, uh, of these polynomials. And if this uh, sequence is asymptotically extrema for the Bernstein type inequality, in other words, this relation holds, then it is also asymptotically extrema for the Chebyshev problem. In other words, this second, re second displayed relation holds. Um, the, the proof is, is actually, uh, so we need to investigate, uh, so, we, so, so we need to prove several particular results. Um, but first, I, I would like to say a few words that uh, this technical assumption is not that restrictive. Um, for example, um, uh, we can complement this main result with the following. So if we have a fixed positive number k, k0, and we know that uh, only k0, only at most k0, zeros are exceptional and all the others lie in a, a fixed compact set. So that is if we have a zero, which is not in this fixed compact set, then this should be a special labeled zero. Uh, and there are at most L and special zeros, uh, which is bounded. And if we factor out these zeros, we get another sequence of polynomials. And if, and, and of course, uh, we know that these special zeros tend to infinity, so they, they escape. And if, if this is, uh, if the original sequence of polynomials are asymptotically extrema for the Bernstein uh, inequality, then this simplified or, or uh, reduced polynomials uh, are again extremal in this sense. For, for uh, the Chebyshev type extremal problem, it is actually known. So it's, it's not new. Okay. And uh, so this, okay, once again, this compares the very restrictive uh, set of asymptotic uh, the Bernstein type problem and the Chebyshev type problem. Uh, excuse me. So you have a couple of minutes. Ooh. Oh, sorry. Oh, how many minutes do I have? Two, two or three. Okay. Ooh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so I, I hurry. Uh, okay, so the, the opposite uh, comparison is, of course, uh, not true. I mean, we can construct this very simple polynomial. It, it looks like a very nice polynomial. It's, it's, it's written here. So this is asymptotically extremal at, at almost everywhere on, on the unit circle. But if we multiply it with a very small polynomial, the, everything goes wrong. So somehow this nth square root preserves this good part, but it completely kills this, this bad part. But this bad part has effect on, on, on the inequality. Okay, and uh, I would like to mention just three tools. The first one is this, uh, so it, uh, it, it looked very standard to us, but we couldn't find a reference, so we had to prove it. So, but if you have ever seen such result, then I, I would be happy to hear more. The first one is, is uh, that if you have a set K and we extend it with an extra set X, this extra set, then the normal derivative, uh, the density of the equilibrium measure decreases. Okay, but the point is that this is done in a uniform manner. So we do not know much about this set X, or uh, that it is not small, and it is in a big fixed compact set far away or set K. 
And the point is that we can do this estimate in a, in a uniform manner, independent of, of X. Okay, the next tool is, is about the regularity. A again, this is more, it is even more surprising for us that we couldn't find a reference for this. Uh, you are all familiar with the regular boundary points for the Dirichlet problem, and uh, uh, which is usually defined as this one. Actually, we used here the Green's function, and uh, we, we were interested in the intersection of the uh, level lines as we shrink the set. What is in the, in the intersection? Uh, when K is a compact set, it is not necessarily regular, but we assume that uh, the capacity is, is positive. And uh, okay, it turned out that apparently the, the, this intersection is nothing else than the closure of, of this point, which can be written in this way. So here we require that for all sequences converging to to this particular z, this limit should be zero, while we need just, here we need just one sequence. And uh, uh, we try to compare with two uh, known uh, tools. Uh, well, Landkov introduced quasi-isolated irregular points, and uh, also it could be compared with, with Wiener's criterion. Uh, Okay, and uh, uh, one more tool is, is this one. Actually, uh, so we, we have a sequence of sets and we would like to test it with, with a test set K. And we, we know that in some sense, this LN set leaves or, or uh, uh, the set K, that is the intersection has, has zero cap tends has very small capacity then this this holds I mean we, we can conclude from this uh, independent capacity the the, the measure uh, okay and and sorry I'm probably I'm out of time and, and thank you for your attention and if you are interested there are some references here as well yeah, thank you Bella I have a uh, time for one question or one remark. So maybe uh, in Zoom. So no questions, no remarks. Okay, then uh, let's uh, thank the speaker once again.